what's up, it's Jake. Uh, in addition to the fact that I'm into music and uh, my love for the Penguins and the Steelers and the Pirates, uh, I'm also a, a fan of MMA. Um, typically speaking, I, I follow mostly everything the UFC puts on. Uh, I watch Ultimate Fighter. I watch the Embeddeds and stuff like that on YouTube. I like watching Dana White looking for a fight. Um, I follow several of the fighters on uh, Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff. And I, I usually get the pay-per-views either at my house or at a friend's house. And, you know, we'll get together and watch them. Um, in the last uh, probably year or two, though, it just seems like the whole the whole organization of the UFC has sort of, I don't know, shifted. There's like a, a, a lot going on that's that's not what drew me in to UFC. Um, I really, really love fights. I love to watch it. I think it's, you know, it's really compelling knowing what the fighters go through to uh, get trained for a fight. The hardships they face in their lives because they don't make tons of money anyway. Um, seeing their family life, you know, all the behind the scenes stuff, it's a lot of, you know, heartache and stuff because you're away from your family and you're trying to grind it out. And this is your dream, and, you know, maybe the, the other person in your household has to be, uh, you know, the breadwinner because you're not really earning a ton of money to fight and stuff like that. You know, that, that stuff on its own is dramatic and compelling and uh, it, it gives you a lot of reason to watch and to root for the fighters. Uh, but I feel like in the last couple years, especially since uh, the UFC was sold for $4 billion or whatever, it feels like everything is kind of turned upside down and everything is all about, um, you know, external storylines. It's all, you know, like crazy stuff at the press conference or crazy stuff on social media. Um, you know, back in the day, it was like the most dramatic thing that might happen is, you know, one fighter kind of trash talking another fighter. And then, you know, the most dramatic thing might be that somebody somehow misses weight or something. And now, you know, you have all this stuff with Conor McGregor. Um, he's been a distraction in the past, you know, throwing water bottles and stuff like that. And now uh, he attacked this bus and you know, injured several fighters and you know, basically wrecked the entire uh, pay-per-view card that's supposed to go on uh, tonight, uh, UFC 223. It's just, it's, it's become a circus. And it's not just Connor. I mean, this is the most egregious uh, you know, event that, that has occurred outside of the octagon. Uh, but there have been tons of fighters who've, you know, gotten out of line. Um, I forget who it was. Maybe it was Cyborg and somebody. They were at a UFC retreat or something, and, and there were, you know, fists thrown. Um, you know, that was crazy. And it just seems like the combination of the Reebok deal and the UFC sale and the heightened use of social media and the media kind of covering UFC more and giving fighters more of an avenue to, to talk and say their piece and whatnot. It just seems like all of that is the perfect storm that has created a ton of unrest within MMA in general. Um, I, I think that the, the power of the UFC was always that they had the top tier fighters and they could put on fight cards that were really entertaining and highly skilled and you knew going into that fight card that the fights were going to matter. They were going to mean something uh, to the fighters, to the division, to the, the commentators, to everyone watching. They had meaning and they were significant fights. And now everything is sort of up in the air. Like if you don't feel like defending your title, eh, no big deal. Uh, if, you know, if you can't make weight two, three times, meh, you know, no big deal. Uh, if you cause a, a, you know, cause problems at the weigh-in or at the, the press conference or whatever, eh, meh, no big deal. Uh, if you get 
busted with PEDs. Eh, you know, we'll, we'll suspend you for a little bit and then we'll bring you right back. And all the while, while you're suspended for this or this person's taking time off or whatever, no one really has to defend their belt. Eh, we're not going to take the belt off of anybody. And we'll just, uh, we'll make an interim title. And so, the, let's just give a belt. You get a belt. You get a belt. You get a belt. Like, every person that fights now can just, man, let's just give them a belt. Or they just won't get anything. It'll just be a big money fight. You know, this guy's not going to defend his belt because he's going to change divisions and, and, and fight this other guy for a lot of money. And the guy he's fighting, it, you know, he's defending nothing in his division either. He's, he's giving up nothing because they're not stripping him. But, you know, the, the people in the weight classes are are standing around twiddling their thumbs while the champions go off and make movies and and go fight boxing matches and go have money fights and all this different stuff and they can't get anywhere you know you have guys that that are toiling in the top five for two or three years in a row without ever seeing even a glimmer of hope that they might get a title a title shot because the person who told who holds the title is mia and just doesn't feel like fighting and the UFC is just not going to do anything about that or they're going to create a fake belt you know and, and give it to whoever they feel like just throwing in there and, and giving a title shot to it's crazy um, you know some of the some of the divisions have had sort of a lot of fighters leaving you know maybe people going to Bellator and stuff like that and I can't say that I blame them I mean UFC is the premier fight experience but you can no longer get your own sponsors for your fights you can in Bellator and in Bellator they they pay real money for some of those fighters to defect from the UFC and go over to Bellator and then you know in Bellator I think it still matters where you're ranked I think it still matters when they're putting together a fight card and they're saying who are we going to get to fight you know the number two contender well, it's probably going to be number three or four. That's how it should be. That's how it makes sense. But in the UFC, you'll have like an unranked guy fight a number three guy because they had some Twitter beef or some issue, you know, six years ago where they fought and, oh, we're going to have a big rematch. I don't get it. And then you have situations where somebody fights for the title. They, they whoop the champ. I mean, whoop them. And then they give the champ an immediate rematch because they had the belt for a couple of years. You know, it's like, what is going on? Like, there are other people who have been champing at the bit to get in there and get their, their shot at, at that belt. And you're telling them, oh, no, you have to wait because the champion who just got embarrassed, uh, they're going to get another shot now. I mean, shouldn't you have to work your way back up to a rematch if you got whooped like that? I mean, I get a rematch if it's a really close fight, something that goes the distance. It's like the fight of the year candidate. You know, people are, are talking about it around the water cooler, and it's like the biggest event. You know, in that case, yeah, give them a, give them a rematch. You know, and then, and then just cross your fingers and hope that it's not, uh, you know, the, the Tyrone Woodley Wonder Boy rematch. Um, there's just so much that kind of draws me away from UFC at this point. I want to love it. You know, I want to love the fighters. I want to be, uh, you know, deep into the sport. But I feel like I can't be because, you know, some of my favorite fighters have just fallen off the map or gone MIA or got into stupid, you know, issues outside of, of the sport. You know, John Jones was, was my favorite fighter. He's the most dominant fighter I've ever seen in MMA. Uh, I don't know that there's anybody who could beat him. And he's ruined his career by doing coke and, you know, taking different drugs and this and that. And you can say all day that, that he didn't do it on purpose or, you know, he got tainted supplements or something. But when you're at that level, you have a responsibility to know where your shit is coming from. It makes sense that you should be held to a high standard to where you pay attention to like hey maybe I should get my drugs from a reputable place maybe I shouldn't take three dollar gas station dick pills these are things that people have to keep in mind when they're supposed to be the most premier athletes of a sport when you're the face of a sport you have to be smarter than this you know that's one of the reasons that I love hockey the way I do because 
for the most part, and I mean like a vast, vast majority of the big name players, they don't get involved in, in off ice drama. You're not gonna find them in the tabloids. You're not gonna find them running their mouths on, on social media. And you're not gonna find them throwing their careers away by doing a bunch of uh, weird shit outside of the, the rink, you know? You know, you see somebody like Sidney Crosby or Connor McDavid or Jonathan Taves, you know, like those guys are the are some of the biggest faces of the franchise or of, of of the sport, you know, in the NHL. And they're by all accounts they're they're very kind of reserved on on what they put out into the social media sphere and they they seem to take uh, precautions to make sure that their private lives stay private. They're not loud mouths. They don't try to, you know, veer off too far into other lanes where they're trying to have opinions about stuff and everything. Uh, they're human beings, you know, but they, there's no reason why you have to be uh, a distraction from anything and, and why you have to throw your career away to go out and have fun and party and all that stuff. Um, you know, maybe USADA is a little bit... Uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit overzealous with some of the fighters in the UFC and maybe they can make it a little more lax. But still, you know what the rules are, so you should probably take precautions. And then you have people like Connor who decides he's the biggest thing to hit MMA ever. And I was a big Connor fan. I, I became a Connor fan really early in his in his UFC time. Um, you know, I'm not gonna toot my own horn and say I've been following him since he was a kid or something, but uh, you know, I I was definitely on the Connor train way before he, you know, shocked the world and beat Aldo and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's crazy to see his transformation. You know, I think he was a, a really, really awesome fighter and I still think he's an awesome fighter, but he was a, somebody you could actually feel like you could look up to. Uh, he said all the right things, you know, when he, when he would get into the octagon, he carried himself with with you know respect and he was he was respectful to the other fighters and even if he you know talked a lot of, of trash during the lead up to the fights he would be respectful to the fighters in the octagon he'd shake their hand you know all that kind of stuff after a fight uh, when he would lose or when he would win he was super classy he would never rub it in anyone's face that he just beat them he was always very complimentary and, and you know just the kind of thing you would want as an example and when he lost to Nate Diaz, he said all the right things there too. He was trying to explain what he thought he did wrong in the fight, what he thought was his downfall. And then he gave Nate a ton of praise and was very, very complimentary and classy. And I was, I was probably as, as motivated to be a fan of Conor McGregor in that loss as I was any other point in his career because he showed me that he could lose with dignity and not be a sore loser and not call names and give excuses and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then he sort of got this big head on him and he started getting a little more boisterous and a little more cocky and uh, you know you could tell he was trying to live a lavish lifestyle and every Instagram post was about some you know expensive car that he had or some fur coat or whatever it was. Um, it was it was pretty crazy to see. And then he decided he wanted to start running his mouth to, to Mayweather. And Mayweather was running his mouth to him. And then before you know it, it's a real thing and it's going to happen and there's going to be this fight. And meanwhile, everyone in the UFC is like, why isn't Connor defending his, his belt? Like, he has a belt to defend. We are all waiting in line to get a shot at that title. We've been working hard for years, you know, to get to this point. And now we're just going to be in a holding pattern while Connor goes off and does whatever he wants. I mean, that's really unfair to those guys. And it's crazy that they allowed that to happen. But they did. And he went off and he boxed Mayweather. And, you know, he lost, obviously. Uh, you know, you can debate all day about whether or not he had a good showing. And, you know, I think he had a couple moments where it was, it was cool to see him in there. But for the most part, it was... It did nothing for, for the UFC. It did nothing for MMA. Um, I mean, it really didn't help at all. 
but it gave Connor a humongous payday where he felt like he ran the world and he felt like he definitely didn't need the UFC as much as the UFC needed him. And that's probably true. Um, and he's, you know, he hasn't fought since. He hasn't fought in over 500 days or whatever. Um, it's just, it's crazy to see that, that shift from him being very humble, very measured, to being this super larger-than-life guy who feels like he can get away with anything. He feels like, you know, he can show up in New York and throw a, a hand truck through a bus window and he's just going to be fine. That's that's a dangerous personality to have as, like, the face of, of MMA or the face of the UFC. Uh, they need to get sort of ahead of that and figure out what they want to do with him. And I feel like maybe they could, you know, they, they might cut him. I don't know. I really don't know. There's a lot of that kind of stuff that sort of just keeps happening in the UFC. And I don't know what the cause is for all of it. And I don't know what the solution is at all. But I know that just as a, as a fight fan who has been following uh, MMA since the Pride days. I mean, Pride used to, they used to run Pride fights on, um, I think it was like Spike TV or something. And I don't remember what year it was, but hell, I still lived at home for my parents and 36 now. Um, I used to, yeah, it was probably before I was in college or maybe around there. I don't know. But I used to watch those fights and I became a big fight of, or a big fan of like Fedor and Mirko Krokop and uh, you know, all those guys from the Pride days. And then as the UFC kind of grew and the Ultimate Fighter grew and stuff like that, I, I got really into watching those and got into watching the fights and before I knew it, I had some friends who were also into it, and we would get the pay-per-views, and I mean, we've spent a lot of money on pay-per-views over the years, and we've spent a lot of money going out to sports bars and watching the fights, and we've spent, you know, a lot of time keeping up with all of it, and, and you know, following the fighters and all that stuff, and at this point, I, I feel like all of us, all of my group of friends, we're all way less into it now than we were even just two or three years ago. Um, you know, when when they brought women into the UFC, we were stoked about it. We, we would watch those fights just as intently as we did the men. And, you know, at, at that point, you still had John Jones. You still had, uh, you know, I guess Connor was just kind of starting out to be, like, this big thing. Uh, Brock Lesnar was around. There's just there's so much that has changed in the last few years, and I, I think a lot of that drama that's that, that's unfolding is kind of just detracting from the experience of being a fight fan. Um, a lot of people joke that the UFC is becoming something akin to the WWE, and I think that there's a lot of validity to that. I think there's stuff that goes on in the UFC that you wouldn't expect to see in the UFC five years ago that you would have expected to see in the WWE. The difference is the stuff in the WWE is all scripted. It's all for show. It's not real people. It's not real violence. It's not real drug issues. It's not, you know, I mean, Conor McGregor is in, well, he, he was in custody. He got arrested. You know, when somebody hits somebody with a chair in the WWE, it's fake. I mean, yes, they really hit them. And I'm not trying to say that that shit doesn't hurt. But that's a scripted moment in a scripted event. It is not real life. But Connor and some of the other you know fighters in general in the UFC have taken to those kinds of those kinds of scenarios and brought them into the real world and so I, I just it's so crazy you know it is a lot of the WWE type stuff but it's real life it's stuff that you can get arrested for it's stuff that you can go to jail for and and it can ruin a career you know being the bad boy of WWE is an angle being the bad boy of the UFC makes you an asshole. 
people want to watch the fights, but they can't watch fights if the fights don't happen. And the fights can't happen if somebody's throwing a freaking hand truck through a bus window, cutting up people's faces and putting glass in their eyes. People can't watch a, the fight of the century in the UFC if the people who are expected to be in it are suspended on PEDs or, you know, deciding to go off and, and freaking box. I want the UFC to be what it was several years ago. And it doesn't have to have the same cast of people. I love a lot of the, the, the people who are, are, you know, up and comers in the UFC. They're still exciting to watch. Some of my favorite guys are people who are probably never going to win a title. They're never going to get a shot at the title because they maybe aren't the most dominant fighters, but they're fun to watch. They have a good story. They have a, uh, you know, something that draws me to them. And I don't need people throwing hand trucks through windows to, to excite me enough to watch the UFC. The fights are the excitement. The storylines are this guy and this guy are going to fight each other. That's the storyline. You don't need more storylines than that to make the sport compelling enough for people to watch. I mean, these are people getting really, really hurt <laughs> in fights. You know, breaking bones, tearing muscles, you know, getting humongous contusions and probably concussions. You know, these people are putting their lives, literally their lives, on the line to entertain us. That's enough drama. That's enough drama and excitement for anyone. So they definitely don't need to play up any of this outside distraction. And the fact that the UFC won't rein in some of these guys is crazy to me. If you've got a Conor McGregor who's just constantly a distraction, cut him. Cut him out like a cancer. I love him as a fighter. I love to watch him fight. I think he's one of the best in the game. But he's not doing anything for the UFC right now. And the fact that he still holds a title in one division and the fact that he left one other division because he just wanted to chase a different title I mean that stuff's not good for the sport and it's not good for the fighters and the fighters know it and the fighters are getting restless because they're saying look if if I can't make something of myself within the UFC I'm gonna go somewhere else or I'm gonna retire or you know whatever it's sad and it's it's a it's a bummer because there's some of those guys that I really like a lot that aren't getting any you know, any younger, and, you know, you were expecting them to just hang in there, just just hold tight, you know, maybe eventually we'll get it together. That's nonsense, man. If somebody's a distraction, cut them. People can't, you know, people can't make weight two or three times in a row. Bump them up a weight class. If they can't handle it, then cut them. I want to get back to the fact that you can, you can count on a card happening and if a fight got pulled from a card, it was only going to happen because some injury happened in training. You know, I can live with a fight falling apart because of that. But because somebody doesn't make weight, that's bullshit. Because somebody had PEDs, that's bullshit. A fight not being able to happen because some other fighter threw a fit and injured them, that's bullshit. That's crazy. You know, the UFC decided they were going to go through uh, or go to these these Reebok, you know, outfits because they, they felt like legit sports had uniforms and they're trying to legitimize their sport. But name me a sport where athletes can get away with the kind of stuff that they get away with in the UFC. If somebody threw something through a window injuring other players in any sport, they're going to get probably suspended for a season or something. But what's going to happen to Connor? Probably nothing. Maybe a slap on the wrist. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'll do something about it. But what I do know for sure is that the things that I've seen in the past people do that, that didn't have any consequences, you would never see that in a legitimate sport. So, come on, Dana. If you want the sport to be legitimate, you have to make decisions that a legitimate sport would make. You have to. It just is what it is.